Hello, my name is Greg Harley and today we're going to learn about task listeners. A task listener is a reusable snippet of code or logic that can be a class or an expression that is automatically invoked based on lifecycle events of a task. These events could be creation, assignment, deletion or completion of a task and a typical use case would be on the assignment event the derivation of users from an external resource. Today we're going to be following the documentation tutorial uh, where we create a task listener as a class. The tutorial is available at the link uh, below and the class we're going to create will add a action to the task and that action will create a new process instance. Before we get started, we need to create our project environment. Details of how to create that project environment are also available here. And again, that link will be provided in the comments below. All right. So let's first open our development environment. All right. Here we see we have a pretty standard Spring Boot application with a main, uh, main method, some basic security configurations, and some resource with their application properties. So the first thing we're going to do is create a folder for our listener. We'll call it listeners. Great. We'll now create our task listener and we're going to follow the uh, tutorial in terms of naming and we're going to call it the task SLA initialization listener. So that's task SLA dot Java. This is a class. It implements the task listener interface. some unimplemented methods. All we really need to do is the notify here. Now, this particular task listener is going to uh, uh, access the action runtime service. So let's uh, inject that. Action runtime service. All right, and now we'll do the constructor. going to be calling this as a delegate expression so we're going to make this into a service bean and we're going to call that initialization listener So the next thing we need to do is actually implement our listener logic. So as I say, we're going to use the action service and we're going to create an instance, create instance builder. Okay. Next, we're going to call a definition key um, for an action instance. Uh, the action instance is going to be um, 
dictionary definition key. And the accident instance we're going to call it is start one task process. Right. Um, now we'll give it a scope of the current delegate task. Delegate task. Get ID. And the scope type is obviously task. Right, uh, we we'll need to give it a name. And again, following the uh, tutorial, we'll call it to react to task. And finally, we need to start the action. All right, so what are we doing? We have our action service where we're going to create an instance. The instance will be based on the start one task process uh, action. We're giving it some scope, we're giving it a name, and we're going to start it. This is associated with the task listener. So when the task cr gets created, we're going to be adding this. Save that. And now let's run up the application. Okay, and while that is running, we will go and create some process artifacts in the design. All right. Log in as admin test, the standard test user. And first thing we need to create is an app. We'll call it the demo app. Next, we need to create a process. And we'll call it the demo process. Okay. Now this process is going to be extremely complex and have two user tasks. Task one and task two. Oh, great. Task one will be assigned the our new listener. So let's just search for listeners and we see our task listeners show up here. We're going to be using the create event. Right, and we're going to be using a delegate expression of there we are task SLA initialization listener task SLA initialization listener. Important to get this right. All right, we'll save that which means that when this task is uh, created, the uh, listener code will be executed and an action will be added to this task. When task two is created, there is no such listener, so those actions will not be created. All right, we'll save that. Uh, let's now add a process to be started. All right, so we'll call this the uh, one task process because it has what will have one task. A user task. And let's call it one task. All right, we don't need anything more there. Finally, we're going to create the action that will start the one task process. Here we have uh, an action, we'll call it start one task process. The key will be start one task process. Remember, this was the key that we used in our listener code. It's important that that matches. All right, we're going to use one of the standard bots that's available within uh, Flowable. This bot will start a new process. 
However, you can have your own bots. There's a number of the standard ones, or you can create your own bots. Um, here, the bot signal name is the name of the process or the key to the process we're starting, which is one task process. Uh, in the UI, we're going to put the button in the quick menu. We'll give it a fancy icon, a star will do. We'll set the type for the scope. And that's pretty much all we really need to do. So we'll save that off. So we have a process. We have a second process that's going to get started by the action. And we have the action. Okay. The action will automatically be added from our task listener. All right, let's make sure that the uh, work is, is up and running and it looks like it is. So let's deploy this new process. We've successfully published it and we'll go to Flowable Work. Again, log in as admin and test. Sign in. Now we should have a demo process that we can start. So let's start that. Yes, we wish to continue. Notice we have a task and we have a custom action called react to task. If I click that action, first it goes away and it should have produced another task for me. And there it is. We have one task in the one task process right I, which I can complete go back to my tasks I have the first task which I can now complete and I have the second task the second task does not have the custom action so let's finish that the process instance is now complete so we've just completed the first part of our task listeners Part two will add this task listener automatically uh, using a parse handler. So please tune into that. And I hope this tutorial has been worthwhile for you. Thank you very much.